You know what's funny is one of the comments that I get the most across the channel, this is a recurring comment, is I'll have people say that they wish they had a collection like mine. And, you know, obviously I'm sure a lot of that's a compliment, like, wow, you have a nice collection, that's cool. So from that regard, thank you, I appreciate it. But also I think some of it is people actually want to have this many fragrances. And I'm just sitting here like, no, actually, no, you do not. It looks cool, it sounds cool, but really it's kind of a pain. And what if I told you that even though I have a good amount of fragrances to choose from, Oftentimes I find myself gravitating towards the same things on a daily basis. Today we have five fragrances that I can't keep my hands off of. And I'm kind of like this with everything, not just fragrances. I'll get on like a kick on a tangent where, you know, maybe I'll go back to something, whether it be a, a food that I used to like all the time and then I stopped eating it and then I start eating it now every day or a, a song that I like to listen to or a fragrance. You know, I get on these kicks where I discover something again and then I can't stop, I can't leave it alone. I wear it, I smell it, I eat it until I get sick of it again. And that's what we have here. Five fragrances I can't keep my hands off. These have been ones that I've really been enjoying lately. They're kind of random, kind of different. Uh, just recently I had my girlfriend help me rearrange some stuff in here, get fragrances on shelves and all that sort of thing. So of course we were digging through and I kind of found a couple things that I just really started to like again. So yeah, these fragrances here, I've been wearing them a lot. I will link them down below as well so you can pick them up at discounters along with the fragrance net 35% off link. It's always down there, it always works. Let's talk about it. So this first fragrance I discovered actually when I was browsing fragrance net. So if you remember the saga behind this one, uh, it was being rumored to be discontinued, all of this, all of that. I don't know where this one stands now. I just know that a lot of people were upset about it. I was upset about it too. This one is Loam Old Team, the Ginger Rose Effervescent Masculine Fragrance from Loam, uh, from YSL that is. I always do that, from Loam. It's from Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, yeah, this is a really unique scent. It's a different take on the men's fragrance. It kind of throws some people off because they see rose in here, but don't worry about it. Very fresh rose, mixes well with the nice bright ginger spiciness. It opens up very fresh, uh, quite captivating. I really am a big fan of this one. And that smells great, so refreshing. Very, very cool stuff. And so anyway, I was on FragranceNet. I saw that this is now back in stock. You can buy this. Uh, they did have a 100 mil available. They had one left and I looked again and it was gone. So obviously someone picked that up. I believe all they have now is the two ounce bottle. Again, I will link it down below in that 35% off link as well. So you can get this one for, you know, the lowest price pretty much online, which I believe falls in the $60 range for two ounce, somewhere around in there. If you've been looking for this one, Go ahead and pick one up. Uh, I already obviously have one here, but I did go ahead and pick up a backup bottle, one of the two ounce bottles that they had there, just in case it would go out of stock, just in case it is gonna be discontinued or is already or is going to be or whatever, I'm not sure. I just would like to have another one around because I think this is truly amazing stuff. Make sure you check it out. So this next one is a new fragrance. So I discovered this one when it came out and I bought it at full retail price. 155 or $159 for 100 mil. That's up there. That is Versace Eros Parfum. I never thought I would say this, that I can't keep this off my skin, but it's the truth. I've been wearing this and smelling this one all the time. I think it's a great flanker. It essentially has the same note breakdown as Eros, EDT, EDP, the apple, the vanilla, the mint, but I find that this version here is even more rich, even more refined, even more mature. Uh, did I say even more mature? I mean more mature than Eros EDT and EDP, which really aren't mature at all. So if you want something that with a bit of a mature, refined take, check this one out. And also what's cool about this one is FragranceNet has these in stock already. Uh, 100 mil bottles, testers with caps, so it'll look just like this for 68 bucks. That is crazy this early on. That's basically half off retail. I would jump on that if I were you. It's stronger, it's richer, it is a more mature take. In my opinion, it is the best Eros flanker and I am super happy with it. Honestly, I'm not too salty about paying the retail price. I really enjoy it, but that 68, that, that's hard to beat. So this next fragrance, we have one from Valentino. This one is Womo Intense. So yeah, the former hype monster. You know, this was uh, all over the place at one point. At this point, it's kind of settled down. Just like with any fragrance that catches a good amount of hype, it eventually kind of trickles off. 
but that doesn't mean then that it is a bad fragrance now. It just means that the hype train has moved on to something else. And I think it's really easy to have that happen where, you know, a fragrance starts getting a bunch of hype, you pick it up, you realize that it is justified in that attention and you start wearing it all the time. You're like, oh, this is the best thing ever. I love this. And when everyone else stops talking about it and, you know, you move on to different fragrances, you just kind of forget about it. Then it just kind of sits there and you're like, wait, what about this fragrance here, which at one point was on top of the fragrance game and now is not mentioned nearly as much. That happened with this one. It happens with basically everything, like I mentioned, but this here essentially got a whole bunch of hype because it was able to ride the coattails of Dior Homme Intense, one of the top designer fragrances in the community from a top leading designer brand period. Uh, they were able to tag on to that very well and it worked out great for them. It's got vanilla, it's got iris, it's got some peppery spiciness going on. It's very smooth. It's a little bit more wearable, a little bit less challenging to some extent than Dior Homme Intense, right? That one is very lipsticky, very iris heavy. This one has the iris too, but more vanilla, it's more smooth, it's a bit more creamy than the Dior in that regard. So I would say from a, a brand new fragrance collector standpoint, you know, you're new to the game and you were wanting to pick one up and you were between one or the other, I would probably say to start off with the Valentino. So neither of them are really cheap either. Um, both are gonna be around $100. Uh, the Valentino here, I believe, is on discounters. You can pick it up there. I will link it down below if true. Um, so it, it's not a cheapie, but it is really nice. It's worth the price in terms of the quality, in terms of the performance, in terms of the smell, right? It obviously smells like the Dior. It doesn't make this 100% original, but it is a nice twist on that. It is a nice, more wearable, approachable take from a great designer brand as well. Very cool bottle, very classy, very sexy. It's a great compliment getter. Great for the fall and winter time. Running down to the end already, we have John Varvatos, poor Ohm, just the original with the cool fake leather wrap around the bottle. These John Varvatos bottles are really cool and uh, the fragrances themselves are on the more affordable side, which is cool. Leather, fur, amber, vanilla are a few of the main notes here. It's uh, a very smooth, masculine, sexy men's fragrance, kind of on the more traditional side of things. It's not an aquatic. It's not a super sweet vanilla tonka bean party hype monster fragrance. It's not a Versace Eros bubblegummy fragrance. It's none of the popular stuff. It is just really truly kind of a, a refined gentleman's cologne, you know, something a bit more classic. And I really like that. It's a nice change of pace. You know, it's nothing too loud, it's nothing too gaudy, it's nothing that is, you know, crazy out there. It just smells really pleasant. It's a very mild leather fragrance. It's not like Tuscan leather or even ombre leather or, you know, any of the stronger, more challenging leather fragrances out there. Not that ombre leather is too challenging, but this one's even more toned back than that. The leather is just kind of more so... Uh, it's kind of draped over the top of everything else, just adding a little bit of support, but it's not like the main player where it's a super strong, prominent leather note. So it's done in a very nice way. It's very, very safe. It's a fragrance that's definitely more entry level because of its price point. You can have this one for $30 or so on discounters. You know, it has nice attractive presentation. You know, people are gonna like the texture to it. The scent is nothing overboard, nothing crazy, but I still really like it. And I think it is a good scent to get into if you're just starting out and you don't have a whole lot of money to throw around on fragrances. I wish I would have gotten this one sooner. I really do. I picked up kind of the majority of all of the flankers first. You know, Artisan Pure, Artisan Aqua, Artisan Blue, uh, Dark Rebel, Dark Rebel Rider, everything else basically I got before this one, but I wish I would have gotten this one earlier on. It's a great fragrance that for whatever reason, I just can't keep my nose off of and I can't keep it off my skin. Been having a lot of fun wearing this one, enjoying it. I think it's a very pleasant scent for the price. The last step of fragrance that I have talked about a little bit on the channel, kind of a newer discovery for me from Dolce & Gabbana. It is Velvet exotic leather. So this actually is my scent of the day. I've been smelling it throughout the video on myself. Smells great. So what intrigued me was obviously the note breakdown. It's got like amber. It's got leather, of course, but it's not like a strong leather note here. It's got a little bit of a sweet vanilla tone. There's uh, some cardamom, 
So what this one kind of is, is almost a little bit of a hybrid between Dolce & Gabbana the one, EDT, EDP, and Lano E. Delome. Sounds crazy, but it kind of is. You get that cardamom spiciness, you get this leathery, ambery uh, type of smell from Dolce & Gabbana. There's tobacco in here also a little bit, I believe. It smells fantastic. I mean, the color of the fragrance, uh, and you know, of course, the corresponding colors on the cap here, the bottle, um, are reminiscent of Dolce & Gabbana the one. I do think for sure that uh, they know that also, and just the scent color, everything does match the fragrance itself, you know, a rich, uh, sexy, smooth, masculine fragrance. It also isn't too overboard. <laughs> it almost wouldn't surprise me if this was a mod of Dolce & Gabbana the one. So when they were creating that fragrance, uh, the perfumers were sending back, back a bunch of modifications so that the creative director could smell them and decide on what they want. It seriously wouldn't surprise me if this was a mod. Like, it really wouldn't, you know. I think that for the main line, you know, the main Dolce Gabbana line, the $40, $50 price range fragrances, and just the ones that get pushed out to the masses, I think this might have been a bit too much, and I think they knew that. And they would have said, you know what, let's put that aside. Let's go with this modification here, which is a bit more wearable, a bit more likable. And then maybe they dug this one back up. They're like, hey, let's throw this in here because it is uncannily similar. Like you you can't miss it. If you smell Dolce & Bonnet the one and you smell this, the nice incense combination here. It's a little bit more smoky, more rich. God, that is amazing. It is a more refined kind of niche take on the one with a little bit of a cardamom, a lot of weed alone, sexy, fun vibe in here. I think this stuff is killer. I'm a big, big fan of this one. Incredible. I wish I would have bought the five ounce bottle because I know they do exist. Just absolutely amazing. I love this stuff and I have no problem with wearing it and smelling it for days in a row. Alrighty guys, there you have it. That is five fragrances that I can't stop wearing. I think these are amazing. All great, all in their own way. A little bit different here, like low mole team. Not something I would normally reach for in winter time, but you know, I kind of picked this one up and was checking it out. And I'm like, man, why don't I wear this more? Now would be a good time to start while well, I'm just hanging out inside. Let me know down below what are some fragrances that you can't stop wearing, you can't keep your nose off of. And remember, I will provide links to all these down below along with the fragrance net 35% off code. So you can check out through there and get the lowest price. That code link is always in my videos. Again, it's just a link, it automatically applies. So at any point, if you're gonna shop with them, make sure you hit that gives you the best price. Sometimes I try to give you 25, sometimes I try to give you 20, sometimes I try to give you nothing. Don't fall for that. 35 always right down there. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. Coming up on New Year's. So uh, I'll see you then, but hey, happy early New Year's. New Year's Eve Eve. Have a fun one this week. Do some partying. You deserved it. It's been a great year. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.